there. I'm Amy Riles with Honestly Horses and I thought I would show you what it looks like when I wash a tail and then put it up. So we're just going to roll through how I do that. I'm going to start out by wetting it completely all the way to the bone, making sure I get it really good and soaked. Then I'm going to add some shampoo and work that in really good and I'll show you what that looks like. So let's go. Rinsing is the most important part of washing a tail. If you don't get all the soap out and then all of the conditioner, unless it's a particular kind of leave-in conditioner, you will most definitely cause buildup and they'll itch and rub and have all sorts of problems with that. So it's really important that you really get down in here just like you did scrubbing it and rinse it all the way to the bone make sure everything is out of here where that tailbone is we want it to be super clean in here before we go to put it up i usually take this opportunity while i have my water hose out to go ahead and come around and clean my geldings sheath out i'll take my sponge in there and work on that a little bit and then on a mare, I always make sure I clean between their udder, their teats, because they can get super itchy and crusty up in there and then they can rub their tail because of that. So it's real important that we know those things and that if your horses are rubbing their tails, in addition to parasite control, keeping them clean up in that area is super important. This horse has a really thick tail, so it takes a while to get all the soap out. And I'm looking for squeaky. I want squeaky clean here. So I'm just about to done or I'm about halfway through this tail picking through it with my fingers I know I've gotten it really clean because my hand is very clean I don't have any dirt or crud building up on my fingertips as I do this I'm just picking through it a little bit at a time I don't ever take a brush to a tail because that breaks it off and I want nice long thick full tails so that's what this looks like as I'm picking through and when I get to the end here, I'm going to braid it up and put it in a tail sock so that it will stay clean on the ends and not get broken off as she swishes flies and things like that. The tail bag is long enough for her to use it for that purpose. A little bit damp right here at the end. All right, so I have a nice, clean and dry tail and I have hand picked all the way through it. So I'm gonna take a hold of this tail and I'm gonna separate it so that I have some of these longer hairs, if you can see that, hanging down. I don't want the really long ones, so I don't want the ones that touch the ground out of here, but I do want some of these shorter hairs. So I'm going to leave those out of my tail bag. Just going to comb through that with my fingers a little bit. I'm going to come down about one inch below his tailbone. So his tailbone ends right here, right in here, and I'm going to come down about an inch below that. And I'm going to separate it into 
three equal parts. Now there's a couple ways you can do this. You can separate this out and you can braid um, like a string or bunting into your braids. If you have a super long tail, you can do that. He, he has a long tail, but it's not like dragging the ground or anything. So I'm not gonna do that. I'm just gonna use bands in it. But I'm gonna attempt to show you. I'm just gonna real quickly throw a braid in here. His tail is very clean. He gets in the pond regularly, so my goal here is to keep his tail up out of the mud because it gets mud clumps on the end of it and it just is nasty. So I'm going to braid it down. I'm not pulling tight, just snug enough to put my braid together. And I get just about to the end. I'll put a rubber band in it. I like these super stretchy little tiny rubber bands. They hold really well. Then I'm gonna go back up here to where the tailbone is and I'm gonna make sure that I'm a couple of inches down from that. So not my first little loop here, but probably like the second one down here. I'm just gonna tuck this through like that. And then I've got a second rubber band. I'm gonna take that and I'm gonna put it around this part. Just kind of holds it in place. Then I've got my tail sock and I have it turned inside out because I'm going to stick my hand all the way up in here and I'm going to grab a hold. Yes, he gets a pink one. Real, real men wear pink. This one's pretty stained, but I promise it's been washed and it's clean. And I'm gonna put my little ends through here where my braid is. And I'm just gonna tie that in a knot on the side. Just like so. And that gives him extra on the end. He'll swat flies with that and such. And he's got these top hairs. Nothing in here is pulling tight at this tailbone. That's pretty loose right there at the base of the tailbone. I don't want it to be snug because it'll break off. He'll pull that and it'll break. So there we go. There's what that looks like. His tail is up and good to go. You look gorgeous in pink, my friend. I'm Amy Riles with Honestly Horses. Click that like and subscribe for more tips on training, grooming, all sorts of things, just thoughts on horses. Until next time, happy trails.